Welcome to my video tutorial on specimen study of larynx. Here the specimen is showing tongue and larynx. Larynx is continuation of laryngopharynx. It extends between C3 and C6 vertebrae in an adult. It continues below as trachea. It is made up of cartilages and muscles. Here is the anterior view of tongue a pair of submandibular salivary glands. Here is the hyoid bone and below are the cartilages of larynx. They are thyroid cartilage, cricoid cartilage which are visible from the anterior aspect. From the posterior aspect, epiglottis, arytenoid, corniculate and cuneiform cartilages are visible. Thyroid, cricoid and most of the arytenoid cartilages are hyaline cartilages whereas epiglottis, corniculate and cuneiform cartilages are elastic in nature. Few cartilages are arranged in pairs and few are unpaid. They are unpaid cartilages are epiglottis, thyroid and cricoid which are present in the midline. Paid cartilages are arytenoid, corniculate and cuneiform which are seen on the posterior aspect in pairs. Let's observe few details of laryngeal cartilages. Epiglottis. It's a leaf shaped cartilage, elastic in nature, present in the midline, absorbed on the posterior aspect. It has two ends, lower and upper. Lower end is attached to thyroid cartilage upper end is free. It has two surfaces anterior and posterior. Here is the anterior surface towards base of the tongue and it is attached to the tongue through three mucosal folds median and two lateral glossoepiglottic folds which enclose two shallow depressions called valleculae. Here is the posterior surface which is smooth lined by mucous membrane. It has two lateral borders which are connected to arytenoid cartilages through airy epiglottic folds which are mucosal folds having airy epiglotticus muscle underneath. So the parts of epiglottis are two ends upper and lower two surfaces anterior and posterior and two lateral borders. Thyroid cartilage. It is the largest cartilage of larynx. It has two symmetrical halves known as thyroid laminae. Each lamina is quadrilateral in shape having four borders and two surfaces. The borders are anterior, posterior, superior and inferior. Two anterior borders meet in the midline to form thyroid angle which varies in males and females. The posterior border is lindia, projects upwards and downwards in the form of superior and inferior horns. The surfaces are outer and inner. Outer surface shows an oblique ridge, whereas the inner surface is smooth and lined by mucous membrane. Here is the Posterior view of thyroid cartilage showing superior horn and its posterior border. Here is the inner surface of thyroid lamina lined by mucous membrane. It forms the lateral boundary of laryngopharynx and a shallow depression called pyriform fossa. The entire posterior border receives the insertion of longitudinal muscles of pharynx. So the parts of thyroid cartilage are four borders and two surfaces. Borders are upper, lower, anterior and posterior 
surfaces are outer and inner cricoid cartilage it is a signet ring shaped cartilage it has a broad posterior lamina which is cut in the specimen showing its inner surface which is smooth lined by mucous membrane posterior lamina continues anteriorly as a narrow anterior arch the posterior lamina above articulates with arytenoid cartilages and below continues with trachea so the parts of cricoid cartilage are anterior narrow arch and a broad posterior lamina coming to the paired cartilages each arytenoid cartilage articulates with the upper border of broad posterior lamina of cricoid cartilage arytenoid cartilage is a pyramidal shaped cartilage having an apex above and base below apex articulates with corniculate cartilage and cuneiform cartilage lies in the area epiglottic fold above the corniculate cartilage the area epiglottic folds are mucosal folds extend from arytenoid cartilage towards the lateral border of epiglottis posteriorly both the arytenoid cartilages are connected through interarytenoid muscles lined by mucous membrane so that along with the epiglottis they form laryngeal inlet which is bounded anteriorly by epiglottis laterally by area epiglottic folds and posteriorly by arytenoid cartilages interarytenoid muscles and the mucous membrane lining them here the specimen is showing anterior view of larynx here is the posterior view where the larynx is sectioned in the midline here is the laryngeal cavity here is the thyroid cartilage with its laminae here is the epiglottis here are the airy epiglottic folds extending from arytenoid cartilage towards epiglottis between the thyroid lamina and airy epiglottic fold lies a shallow depression known as pyriform fossa on either side of laryngeal inlet it is a part of laryngopharynx it lies above the level of vocal folds the pyriform fossa bounded laterally by inner surface of thyroid lamina and medially by airy epiglottic fold it is lined by mucous membrane underneath which runs internal laryngeal nerve so the pyriform fossa is bounded by laterally inner surface of thyroid lamina medially airy epiglottic fold and it contains internal laryngeal nerve which has a submucosal course let's observe the interior of larynx the laryngeal cavity is divided into three parts by three pairs of mucosal folds a pair of airy epiglottic folds separate the laryngeal cavity from laryngopharynx and a pair of vocal folds or true vocal cords which extend from 
vocal process of retinoid cartilage towards inner surface of thyroid angle they are formed by vocalis muscle vocal ligament lined by mucous membrane above the true vocal cords are a pair of thin vestibular folds also known as false vocal cords the gap between vestibular and vocal folds is known as glottic part above is the supraglottic part and below is the infraglottic part and the gap between true vocal cords is known as rima glottidis so the laryngeal cavity is divided into three parts supraglottic glottic and infraglottic parts by three pairs of mucosal folds epiglottic vestibular and vocal folds thank you for watching this video